It has been a very, very interesting tournament because no matter what happens uh, in the final, the third place, whatever, no team is leaving undefeated. And I cannot recall uh, a time when that's happened before yeah, in an EG. Yeah, come to mind? So that is incredibly exciting. Now, the UK, I feel, are going to be slightly on the back foot because they, they've made it into the third place by losing to France. A, a, a game that they... Definitely a heated game. A heated game they could have won. Um, came just down to the snitch pull. Came down to the snitch catch. It was an overtime. They could have won it if they'd like played their cards a little differently. However, and they were the reigning European Games champions. So there's Were that. being the key word there. Well, they still are. The other team hasn't won yet. Okay, that's fair. We'll give them another hour or so to hold on to that they, title. They've got an hour. They've got an hour. Uh, whereas Germany has never medaled. Team Germany has never met up before, which means that anything they do now is an improvement. Um, is an improvement in terms of a fourth place finish would be an incredible finish for them. Uh, you see, because the last time they got EG 2017, they came fifth, and World Cup they came seventh. So no matter whatever happens, they've done better than they've done previously. And it's been incredible to watch them play. They've definitely put their uh, heart and soul out onto the pitch this weekend. Especially in front of their home crowd. Oh, yes. The German team They're has been They're a little bit working. loud. <laughs> a little bit? The Germans have been incredibly loud all weekend. They have been chanting and cheering, really making sure to get their team hyped up. That home crowd support has been helping tremendously, in my opinion. Yes, absolutely. So, now, if Team UK can keep their heads in this game, I think they could win. But I think Germany are just going to be in a position there 
happier to be here, whereas Team UK are disappointed to be here. Yeah, that's definitely going to change the mood and the momentum of the game pretty early on and see which team is excited to be out on the pitch because UK does seem a little bit downtrodden compared to the, the way they've been the last couple of days. And they've just had to listen to about 20 minutes of Germans chanting. Oh, various yes. things. Of, uh, there's been dancing. There's been all kinds of stuff. Um, so apparently, because Team Germany have over 25 chants of their own, one for each player, some just about Germany in general, all kinds of stuff. Whereas Team UK is Team UK, Team UK, Team UK. It's just not quite the same. I'm just no. far out there. It seemed to be much more passionate on the German side, but it's not like they've hosted various World Cups, CEGs, and... Yeah, I mean, maybe. Oh, to be fair, uh, the UK's hosted a few European Quidditch, uh, a European Quidditch Cup and a Summer Games That's back, fair. In, back in the day. Oh, gosh. That's before uh, my time, Bex. Uh, I knew Quidditch was a thing, but I didn't play until a month after that, but still. Oh, okay. That's a long time ago. And we so, are just yeah, getting Teams ready. are breaking up. Seems like we're getting our starting lineups out there. I reckon there's going to be um, some British players, some German players starting. That's what I'm going to... That's my guess. Well, you know, that's probably a good guess, Bex. Good way to start off. So let's get you guessing on something else then. How many handicaps do you think the snitch is going to get to, if any, in this match? Because both teams have pretty impressive seekers. I'm going to go with zero. Okay. But only Under five minutes, seeker floor. Yeah, but only because, yeah, like you say, the caliber of the seekers and nothing mm -hmm. to do with the caliber of the snitch. Oh, yeah. We've had some fantastic snitches out here this weekend. The runners have been working their hearts out, but... These Seekers are incredible. I had the pleasure of uh, playing against a few at QPL, a few that were training and trying to get ready for EG, and a scrimmage game against Belgium and Spain. And the Belgian team alone was working me on the Seeker floor. They have some really strong fights out here. I'm just incredibly impressed. Didn't I'm think so Europeans would fight impressed. so hard. Oh, oh, that's a backhanded compliment. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. What would you expect from the American? The Texan. Did we mention, uh, okay, mention Alberto's from Texas? You'll hear it at least nine, ten times during this match, so. Texas, Best West. It's only state in the Southwest and the USQ, apparently. <laughs> oh, something, um, something. Deutschland, okay. <laughs> Germans already getting incredibly hyped up. We're getting everyone down for a brooms up. Someone told me a few years ago, we are ready. We have our towel on the podium. Ha, ha, ha. We reserve place. They didn't, but maybe this year they have. I don't know where that towel's on. All right, so let's see who draws first blood as... We have a fight over the quaffle, a beat, and it looks like UK is going to come up passing back. And uh, a stop, stop to play. play. Seven seconds, even better than previously. Oh Seven whole seconds. Okay. And the ball is in the hands of Germany. I Right. Why? I don't know why. But uh, I think it was a little bit of rolling around on the UK side and trying to reach for the quaffle illegally. But a good job on the ref's part, making sure the game keeps moving. We've had some serious issues with stoppages of plays really draining the time for the day. And looks there like we actually already have a hoop down. Which is funny because Germany hasn't even been over there yet. Yeah, like, so that's a bit know. odd. Geneva it's, Chambers oh, absolutely trying to go for steel. a run. Geneva's first time, number 21, her first time um, competing for Team UK. And she was absolutely just going for it then. Mm -hmm. Maybe UK really did. Oh, my goodness. Tom Stevens has taken down Hannah Grossa in the middle of We've the field. The she couple. is clinging by on. UK. You've got Tom Stevens on one side, Seb Waters on the other. I... Oh, my goodness. They are okay. really fighting on this uh, Quaffle game. This is going to be an intense matchup. Both Germany and the U.K., very physical nations and teams from what I've seen over the last couple of years. So this is definitely one of the more hard-hitting European matches that you'll see. Yeah, it was Hannah Grossa. She, wow. If it takes, if it takes Tom right. Stevens and Seb Waters to get you down, like that's, that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like it's U.K.'s ball with a beater, uh, German beater right in front of them. However, Beck's low number 13 is over by the hoops. If Seb can get the ball to her, she should be able to get it in. Wait, we passed a female seeker, or chasers here? Incredible. Trying to use all your players on the field. You'd think some Quidditch teams didn't even know they had six. No comment. I don't <laughs> want to comment on that. I, 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 why do you keep rendering me speechless, Alberto? It's very bad for commentary for you to keep <laughs> doing that to me. Well, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, the German, the German female players. German roster is absolutely incredible. Yes. Fantastic. It looks like we had a beat before call for that shot, and it's going to be German's ball now. Score still 0-0 zero zero as we're just over a minute into this matchup. 
<laughs> a minute in, two, two stoppages, no goals. Still quick stoppages. Oh, and speaking captain seems to be coming out. And then sent away again. Oh. That's the way we like it. Good job on the ref's part. <laughs> you don't want to talk to them. Um, All right, looks like Germany's trying to play a box offense, really spreading their chasers out near the edges of the hard boundary. Ooh, and almost a late pass, but able to get that off as he had the forward motion. Good for a pass, not good for a score in this game. And what an incredibly long pass as well. Yeah. The German team and the UK team have been doing some really tremendous passing this weekend. Some of the longest I've seen. 25, 30 meter long passes and right to their intended target. Wow, an American who knows what a meter is. I, I know, it's wild. I even know what Celsius is too. Steady on now. <laughs> Careful. Yeah, which is why they are trying to work out a Quidditch pitch size in uh, centimeters and meters is a bit difficult because it's all done on feet originally, so the numbers don't make sense. But The conversions get a bit ridiculous. And another impressive defensive job, but we've got a <laughs> drive by the UK keeper looking out for his passing option, oh! and he makes the grab. That's number 59 on the UK side. That was absolutely fantastic play. That was Seb Waters, the keeper, passing to Tom Stevens. Uh, the chase over there, number 59. And UK will draw first blood just over two and a half minutes into this game. Maybe maybe this will just be a very low-scoring game. I, I don't think this game will go much higher than 50, 60 on either side. Uh, the defense is really uh, impressive on both sides, and they're really not looking to overdrain themselves before snitch on pitch, especially UK after sending it into overtime just to lose on a snitch pool under a minute in. That was an incredible beat by Mikey Orridge, where the guy actually fell down, <laughs> got tripped by the budget. Uh, so, okay, it looks like uh, UK is coming up with bludger control and coming up pretty aggressively. Both beaters now entering the keeper zone for Germany. Looks like they're really going to try and clear the way for their chasers to drive in. And at the moment, Geneva Chambers and Bexlow are completely unmarked uh, behind the hoops. So seven get the ball to them. Yeah, Germany's really staying close to the hoops right now. So those quick tag back in. And now we have UK backing back off a bit as the Germans hold a strong defense, able to tag back in relatively quickly. The Germans playing quite high as well. If they can force a mile pass back over the line, that'd be helpful. And a pass behind the hoops going through the top bin. Second score going to Team UK. Geneva, fantastic. Geneva Chambers, number 21, second goal for Team UK for this match. It looks like we're about to have another stoppage of play as the advantage call is made. Just under, under four minutes into this matchup. So, let's see. We still have uh, the UK up 20 points to zero with Germany trying to get their first score of this match. Having a bit of difficulty getting around the hoops right now. We have some water refreshments out for both teams as well as it's a sweltering day out here in Bamberg, Germany. But teams are doing a pretty good job of managing the heat. I was honestly expecting a lot more heat strokes and a lot more issues with the weather and temperature this weekend. Yeah, so as I, I mean, you know, I managed to walk after Italy. I mean, I managed to walk to get myself an ice cream, and I was quite proud of my achievements today. So, yeah, it was a watermelon one. It was great. Oh, yeah, they've got watermelon, they've got ice cream, they've got uh, beers and sodas all out in front that have really been keeping people fresh. Yeah, the hospitality of this tournament has been great. The facilities have been really good. Incredible. The city's got behind it. Um, I just love coming to German tournaments. The Germans know how to host their Quidditch tournaments. I have to give it to them. And this is an unusually hot. This is not normal weather. We are in a... You know, a heat wave. This is. I bet next week it'll take, bring down to like 20 degrees. Like, oh, oh, I wish course. we were playing this weekend. That's how it works. As soon as you want to prepare your event, get everything ready, it's either completely raining and storming or ungodly hot. That's coming from the Texan right now. Like, they have me sweating bullets out here. <laughs> oh, well, everything's bigger in Texas. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Just like the Quidditch scene. The biggest and the best in the USQ, if I do say so myself. Well, speaking of which, these are two the two biggest NGBs in Europe, which then I'm pretty must be up there like third and fourth biggest in the world or something is Germany and the UK Germany has about 45 to 50 teams the UK is about about the same mm -hmm. I believe so, uh, Germany is actually second if not third biggest uh, coming in behind the US uh, USQ but was it a German who told you that because I'm well I would say it's bigger because uh, I'm the UK <laughs> the uh, Dan Tripp for the UK playing very aggressive with his bludger up right up into the Germany's hoops looks like we have another stoppage of play
And as we wait for the call from the referee crew, looks like the Germans are going to be watering their team up a bit and make sure they're staying refreshed. And on that player front, no, actually, it was a German or a UK player that told it to me. It's actually yeah. my job at the IQA to keep track of all the teams and all the countries around this great wide world that we have. It just sounds like something a German would say. German, the UK, 20 points up right now. And UK's score being good. That takes us 30 to 0. Favor UK. Trying to get out of snitch range early. Just past the 4 minute and 20 second mark. Germany looking like they're slowing down a bit. Going to try and play a little more strategic instead of forcing that ball down quickly. Tactical. Slow and steady. Mm -hmm. It wins the race sometimes. Let's see if it's going to be the tortoise or the hare today. All the bludgers are on the floor then. Nice Can Germany off. make an it advantage? Off. Behind the hoops, avoiding the beat. Oh, but the tackle's going to take her down behind the hoops, and the UK beaters are going to clear the way for a drive. Number 10 for the UK, jumping and scoring through the top bins just at five minutes into the game, taking us 40-0. I'm going to say jumping up to the hoop well, me wasn't quite necessary, but the style points made it. Oh, it. yeah. You've got to have style points if you're going in for a drive. <laughs> What's even the point? What's even the point if you're not? <laughs> so we've got number 12 eight keeping now for Germany. Number 12, Henrik Osselmeyer who plays for the Beetlewold Basilskins. What That's I love, <laughs> Yeah, all of that is a mouthful. Uh, what I love about Germany, we've got so many different teams represented in this team. You've got Hamburg, Rhinos Bond, Horus oh, Ali. Sorry to interrupt you, but that interception by number 23 on the UK team and a scrum now back by the German hoops. Germany having a hard time dealing with the quaffle today. Pass off by UK to the keeper. And once again going back, but taken down in Germany's keeper zone. UK is Sub gesturing to his knee, taken down below the knee. Perhaps is what he's trying to get across the referee. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to grab the attention of the head ref and switching out now to make sure. Oh, and he is a bit heated. I'm glad he is able to get off the pitch. It is not good to play this game when you let your emotions get a little too involved. You need to keep a clear head in Quidditch to make sure you play safe and intelligently. I mean, you've got a roster as deep as both these teams do. There's no reason to stay on if At you all. don't need to. Well, that was smart play on UK's part. Leander Troll, number seven, with the quaffle for Germany. Being taken down by Ben Malpass, rolled right over. That's number seven, Leander Troll. And another stoppage of play. Leander, number seven, one of the longest serving team Germany players. His name, that's really his name. That's not yeah, a Quidditch that's thing. that's not a thing. I <laughs> saw his jersey earlier this week, and I'm like, is he just trolling people now? About to have the call from the head ref. White number two zero, yellow card, illegal contact. Contact to the leg, one minute in the penalty box or until Black scores. So that was contact below the knee. I think that was on Ben... Done by Bell Malpa, so he spends a minute in the box unless Germany can score now. Let's see if Germany can capitalize on this and get their first strike of the match. Try and get this back in snitch range as they are currently losing by 40. Oh, that catch not good enough, but able to stay upright. Number 11 by Germany, Rosa Kohn. Passing back to troll number 7. Getting it back behind the bins, but can't get the passes to connect. Rosa Kuhn, number 11, is the youngest player on the team, but is already a veteran of the team. I think she's turned 17 or 18 or something. And apparently the Germans were literally just waiting for her to turn 16 before they could just put her on the team. I actually heard about an incredible amount of teams trying to bring younger players up. Norway even trying to bring in a 15-year-old to try and compete this weekend. It's been really incredible seeing not only youth Quidditch develop, but the age range of people playing competitively in this league. We say start them young. <laughs> <laughs> start them young, teach them right. That's how you play safe and proper Quidditch. Let the children lead the way. <laughs> lead the way and just let them play. That top going just over the middle hoop, but 14 being taken down by the UK side. Again, by Rosa. Rosa Kuhn took her down. Oh, she is absolutely phenomenal. Doing a great job today. Mm -hmm. 
Germany. Germany's still unable to score right now. They're going to have to pick things up if they want to get, in, if they want that third place medal. But they are cheering as if they are the ones who are 40 up. They really they are. are no, their heads are well and truly up. They are not looking at the floor at all. Well, the German uh, audience is definitely the seventh player on the pitch for them right now. Trying to keep the team hyped up and in the game. You don't want to get, well, two in your head early on in the match as we haven't even hit the halfway mark yet. And Germany can really turn things back around. Impressive contact by troll number seven as the German keeper is able to grab a hold of the ball and immediately attacked as he comes out of the keeper zone. Fun fact. What? Do you have another fun um, fact? The end of troll is a vegan. Fantastic. I've seen quite a number of vegans out here playing. And as an ignorant Texan, when I first started playing this game, I didn't know how they would have the energy to do something without that protein, without that steak in their system. But they've been, turned out to be some of the most athletic players I've seen. I guess eating healthy can actually, well, make you a little healthier. That, that is interesting. You should take that back to Texas and tell them that uh, baby barbecue isn't the way all the whoa, time. Oh, I don't want to get shot. I mean, I still enjoy my steak. Vegans can have their, uh, their rabbit food. I, I still like my meat. So it looks like we have UK bringing up both of their bludgers on offense again, really trying to compress down that German defense. It's been working for them so far, so why stop now? You can now hear the Germans starting to chant for defense. Again, that seventh player on the pitch. And numbers, oh, number seven for Germany avoids the beat. Well, the first beat, trying to recover. Another stoppage of play as we're just past the halfway mark before the Seekers are released. We've got 40, goal, uh, 40 points, but nine minutes. Like we said, very slow. Yeah, In terms very of, low scoring game. But a very fast paced game, but not much scoring. It's that defense. It's one of the most critical parts of Quidditch is being able to guard your team's hoops. Looks like we have a bit of a disagreement between uh, Germany's speaking captain, number 33, uh, Sebastian Elster. He seems to be back on the pitch after skipping last year's World Cup. His home team being the Berlin Blue Caps. Trying to really speak out for this German national team right now. Uh, I think Berlin won Division Two of the EQC. Yeah, I believe Just so. Just recently. Yeah. Germans, again, very impressive Quidditch players. I kind of tug on my heartstrings a little bit because they're more heavy hitters. That's the type of Quidditch I really do enjoy watching. Well, where is that? Where do you play again? Uh, um, that little, little state back in the Union. You know, the seceding one. Doesn't ring any bells. Oh, surprising. I hope you're succeeding in Quidditch. <laughs> if you may have succeeded well, otherwise. Yeah. We're succeeding, not seceding anymore, so it's going quite well. All right, looks like UK is going to start off with the Quaffle at midfield, surrounded by Germans. But Seb's going to make a long pass to Ed Brett, and Ed Brett's going to run it in. That's what's going yeah. to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've got, what, three chasers down by the hoops on Germany's side with no defense, no bludgers. This is going to be a pretty easy score for UK if they can get the uh, pitch and catch. Right to 81, over to the other hoops, and a toss in. Didn't even catch the ball, just knocked it in. Impressive on the UK side. Okay. Way to call it, Bex. Uh I didn't predict the pass to Bex, though. That was great. That was great. That's why they're on the team, and I'm just looking at it. So. <laughs> All right, we just passed the 10-minute mark as the score is 50-0, to zero, favor UK. Germany still unable to draw their first score. would be very interested to see if they're able to do a lot more once the snitch gets on pitch, but UK is probably going to try and catch quickly as, oof, contact is made just as the German chaser hits onto the ground, and we have a fight for the quaffle. Also looks like we have an advantage call. Stoppage of play now. Now would be a good time to chant, let's play Quidditch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll come eventually, especially in the finals matchup if we have anything slow happening. And final match of today, if anyone that wants to continue tuning in after the third place match is going to be France versus Belgium. That is going to be It's going to be incredible. Interesting. Absolutely incredible, especially with uh, the passion that France has pulled out of. Well, I don't know where they pulled it out of. I also... Hold on, as we're waiting for the call from the ref. Don't want to talk over him, so y'all can hear the calls at home. UK, number one, three... Yellow card, illegal contact, illegal push on a helpless receiver. One minute in the penalty box or until Germany scores. All right, looks like we have an illegal contact call. 
Push from behind, it seems like. So another UK player receiving yellow card. That's number 13. That's Bex Loeb. I'm enjoying the chant from the Team UK, which is disgrace to the sport, disgrace to the sport. Bex Loeb, a disgrace to the sport. Um, she's still got a smile on her face, though. You British are so savage. <laughs> Whether it's your meme game, your chants, it, it's my, intense. My favorite is one uh, player. She's not on the squad this year, but Gemma Thrip. And it's Gemma Thrip. She's built like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chance on both these sides. Pretty great. And Jan Mikulowczyk, um, Team UK Reserve. Jan Mikulowczyk, we can't spell his name. We can't spell his name. So, yeah, the UK, it's, it's our football tradition. You know, the soccer. I mean, play, soccer. Oh, yeah, so, y'all play football? Got, me, it, got the text excited. You know, half of the game is chanting and... You know, but you know when we get to the France Belgium game, the tensions, the passions, I'm excited for it. Yeah, the personal rivalries, oh, yeah. the grudges. Mm -hmm. now, I definitely want to give a little bit of credit to Norway for getting France so amped up, as we have incredible tackle by the keeper on number ten, and a first score for the German team, number seven, the troll we've been talking about. As we we have our score fifty to ten now, Germany finally starting to heat things back up and get into their groove. Can I say it again? You can I say it again? You can say it again. This just got interesting. <laughs> oh, good God, Bex. 40. There's only 40 points in it, and a snitch is worth 30, so... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Still close. And mm -mm -mm -mm. it can really heat up once snitch gets on pitch, and those beaters start focusing much, he much more heavier on the seeker game. Not as prominent as in Europe as I would have expected, though. What, to use the seeker? In the States, uh, we use our beaters uh, much more heavily on the seeker floor and try to make sure that the seekers have a chance to get at the snitch. I've noticed that beaters here tend to protect the quaffle game a lot more heavily. Yeah, I've noticed that too, considering that the UK scene has been very heavily involved with the bubble, where you've got yes. two, seek the two um, beaters going around the snitch solely. Not very prominent for many European teams. I actually got yelled at for trying to get a beater onto one of the snitch in an earlier game today just throws me off. Much different playing styles than I'm used to back in the US. Of course, the disparity between, uh, between the European teams. You've got teams who are making their debut, like Scotland and Denmark, mm -hmm. but then you've also got these teams who have been here since the beginning. The 2012 um, UK was the first time the UK team And played. a shot through the top bins. That's going to take us back into snitch range. As Germany retains bludger control, Sending one back to the hoops and having a bit of a fight by num with number 15 from the UK side. Getting a bit intense on the beater uh, floor, but they're still communicating quite friendly. You can see they're actually talking down on the pitch. It's honestly one of my favorite parts of this game. When you're getting intense, you're in the moment, and then all of a sudden you realize there's still a friendly face in the opposing jersey. Yeah, at the high level, these players play each other at least a couple of times a year, if not more other moat tournaments and things like that. So they're different countries, but, you know, we can fit in Texas. We're so small, you know? <laughs> oh, I know all too well. I flew in and out of the Netherlands for uh, Florent, for World Cup last year in Florence, and I took a trip from the Netherlands down to Italy, and it was still smaller than the interior of my state. Went through all of four different countries on my way down. Your state's too big. I uh, know. It's just right, as we have another score by the what UK. What an amazing long shot. That was that great. That was absolutely great. So the score is now 60 to 20. And I think that's just the kind of long shots that German the Germans were trying to prevent with their condensed defense. It uh, just doesn't seem to be working out for them. But uh, mm, now if they played that, the top. which is a shame because the bludgers seem to be nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty much a bludgerless drive, and they could have made that. But yeah, That's quite unfortunate. Looks like UK slowing down a bit now, really trying to maintain that 40-point lead and not give Germany the opportunity to score. A bit of communication, trying to plan things up, and a pass-off from the keeper. That's Ben Malpass again, number 20, with the quaffle. Strolling. We are out for a stroll on a nice sunny Sunday afternoon. Oh, a nice block by the keeper, but is Germany able to recover as... oh. A bit of a fight down behind the hoops. Number nine for Germany, able to pick it back up. Max, can't pronounce that last name. Schultz? Max Schultz Steinen? Yeah, we'll go for that. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to roll with it. Yeah, just got to roll with it. And I, I roll my R's with my Spanish. Can't really uh, pr announce many of these German names. Germany really trying to get more ground. They're going with these long passes still around the outside. 
We have a bludger go flying to the other side of the pitch. Beat for UK, a toss over to number nine. Behind the hoop, oh, score by Germany, beautifully executed, but Team UK picking up quickly and trying to drive down the pitch. But. Beater stopping him along the way, and number 25 for the German team, uh, Galea Pugnat. I, I do not want to butcher these names. They I just call her Julia. Julia, yeah. yeah. Julia works. I've also never seen Julia with a G before. This is new for me. Abby Harris fighting for the quaffle on the side of the pitch. Abby Harris, number six of Team UK. And she gets thrown out of bounds. That's going to be... Pushed out of the field, therefore it's a turnover. And Fun I fact, Abby Harris is one of my uh, former teammates. Really? We played together in the UK. Yeah. Uh, she's really nice. And she played in the very, very first uh, competitive match in the UK way back in 2012. So that was March, of t March or February of 2012. So Pretty she's veteran been player. The, like the most veteran still around at this elite level. Yeah. Yeah, she's fantastic. And you can hear the German uh, audience really trying to hype their team back up, get this back, or keep this within snitch range as we're at 60-30. UK still in the lead. And Germany driving down, passing to 45. The hoops get blocked, and he is beat. Still getting the pass off. It goes to the top. Benz takes us back into a closer snitch game, so we won't hit overtime right away. That was an absolutely amazing goal by Sarah Kuf. Her first time playing for the national team, number eight of Germany. Her home team is the Hamburg Werewolves. Absolutely All phenomenal. Right. Oh, and a Such nice composure. Drive. Germany doing a much better job on defense at this point, not letting the UK drive down on them and make those passes. Seb has realized he played a bit sloppy there and is subbing off. Team UK's keeper subbing off for number 34, Alex McCartney. All right, and oh. things are looking like they're going to heat up now as we have about 20 seconds until the snitch is released on pitch and another minute and 15 seconds until seekers are released. And we are within snitch range with the differential only being 20 points. This is so incredibly exciting. I think, I think everybody's rooting for Team Germany in the crowd because they are the underdogs going against um, Team UK. Number 98, part, uh, Mikkel from Germany passes to number 9. Number 9 making a run. Clearing out one of the beaters, getting it through the hoops. It takes us... Oh my goodness, 60-50. Germany do a little dance. really making that comeback. Oh my goodness. As we've got another stoppage of play. They just, I feel it's all weekend. The Germans are so technically good. Strategic. They're passing, they're passing, getting the ball exactly where they want it to be, looking for the pass. I've not seen any of their plays be rushed or fumbled. They just... At all, they, they play their game. They're very strategic, and I've been incredibly impressed by the German team all weekend. Ruthlessly efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Ruthlessly efficient. All too true. Well said, Bex. Yeah, because uh, number number ninety eight, Miki Miki. <laughs> I'm gonna butcher this as well. Miki Heinz Heinz uh, is her first time playing for the national team as well. Number ninety eight. Uh, she's got a very long ponytail covering her number, but she's ninety eight, and she plays for Bochum Roa Phoenix. They're also a very good team. But yeah, just the absolute depth of the German squad is is really paying dividends here. Yeah, it really helps. It looks like that score is going to be called good, taking us 60 to 50. Still in favor of the UK team, but well within snitch range. And that's going to be a timeout, trying to stop this moment, or Germany trying to maintain their momentum. Probably get a game plan together and ready. You can see the snitch is on pitch right now. I think the UK is going to be feeling a little nervous. Yeah. I'm nervous because they took fourth at Frankfurt World Cup last year. One of the players said to me today, he's like, oh, I just well, don't. I think uh, last year's World Cup was in Florence, not Frankfurt. Did I say Frankfurt? You did say Frankfurt. Sorry, we're in that Germany now. 2014. 16. 16. Okay. Oh, can't get any of my numbers right right now. The, yeah. hot, the heat is getting to us, everyone. Last year, the World Cup last year. In Florence. Florence, Italy. Got that right. Uh, Team Turkey beat Team UK in the third place playoff. Turkey doing an amazing job. Really the underdog story of World Cup 2018. And so this Team UK player said to me, I just don't want to walk away with nothing today. And, oh. and they're getting into that possibility, but it's going to come down to the seekers, it looks like today. Both, of them, both teams having impressive seekers and quite a, a depth of them too. They've got good rotation. That's one thing that these uh, emerging developing teams have a real hard time with is being able to rotate seekers through once they get a bit winded. And once again, the German sidelines <laughs> hyping up their team. 
Oh, and we are in a very hot room. We are locked away from everybody else because we couldn't hear each other over the si sound of the crowd. And it has honestly got about 50 degrees in this room. And I'm sweating yeah. more than some of the players. Yeah, I was like, I know you all like saunas in Europe, but this is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> Alex McCartney, number four, twisting, one. dancing through the field. He's fumbling, being, being taken fumbling. down by two Germans. And beat, but he gets the pass off while on the ground. Oh, Germany gets the beat in, though. We've got about... Oh, 34 seconds oh. before the Seekers are released, but another stoppage of play. Looks like we're going... Oh, looks like we have some illicit contact on the German side. Oh, illicit contact. <laughs> Let's wait to see what this ref calls for us. Ooh. Do you all know what air conditioning is in Europe? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm so used to this back on our... Germany, number one, one. Yellow card, illegal contact, rap initiated from behind, one minute in the penalty box or until White scores. I believe that's our third illegal contact call this matchup. This time on Team Germany. Rosa again. Rosa. 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 Nine, nine. Nine, nine. Noise. It's so noise. Cool, 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 cool. UK now in possession of the Quaffle with pretty good position in front of the hoops. Let's see if they're able to capitalize on it. To pass, to is he going to pass the Geneva or is he going to go for the run himself? I would pass the Geneva. I'd definitely go for the pass. But in any situation, I think I would just choose to pass the Geneva. Mm -hmm. Oh, didn't even need to. Took it all himself. Takes us to 70-50, favor of the UK, just barely within snitch range. Still anyone's game should the Seekers catch it. We've got about 17 seconds until Seekers are released. Germany in possession of the Quaffle. Let's see, who has Bludger Control? That's going to be UK. So UK definitely with the advantage as Seekers are released in three seconds, two, one. Seekers are released. And Germany getting the incredible head start but getting beat. Both, both, both Seekers ends. are beat. Yep. Uh, number 31 is the Seeker for Germany, Johannes Klein-Peters. Uh, who started playing in Norway. As we And a score from the German side! Oh, we're oh. almost out of cash. <laughs> oh. The secret tail came off. That was a bit quick. But as we've been saying in the tournament, Team Norway is Team Germany's training ground or mm -hmm. something. All these Germans go on exchange. They come back, and they're really good at Quidditch. I don't know what happens up there in the north, but... Apparently, the Norwegians know how to play. Apparently, they took down France yesterday. Uh, just apparently. Apparently. Huh? Oh, that was such an amazing game to watch. On the sidelines, I was just losing my mind, nearly ripping my hair out just seeing this Norwegian team that I didn't really get to see play before take on a team as competitive as France. Looks like we have the goal called good. Still a stoppage of play while the Germans talk with the head ref right now. Definitely a time for the speaking captains to be out and making their case. Not uh, any opportunities for a, a mess up or mistake. All righty, it looks like we're about to have play resuming as players are getting back into position. I believe one of the Seekers is off broom, and it looks like UK is going to get an opportunity at the snitch by themselves. So size matchup, Callum Lake, the Seeker for Team UK, is just very, very big and has very long arms. Let's see if he uh, can make a count. Nope, he got beaten oh. out before he got his chance, because, of course, the snitch has three seconds to get away at that point. So let's see if Callum can make it happen. Oh, and UK coming in, reaching around the backside, number one. Oh, avoiding the beat. Oh, oh no, no, we got, got hit on that Germany one. Germany have just scored again. Tying our game up. First time since we started this matchup. 70-70 is we're at 18 minutes and 45 seconds. Oh, I was going to say. If, oh, if Germany, Germany almost grabbing a snitch, but beat right before as the snitch fell to the ground. If Germany count, catch, uh, put your earplugs in, it's going to get oh, all oh, kinds so of loud up in here. Up in here. Okay. Although, to be honest, the snitch is being quite well protected. Yeah. The Trev is on. Oh, no. Team UK is number 66. Oh, uh, now. This is intense. Trev went to EQC and played a total of, like, four minutes all weekend. Yep. Like, because he just caught snitch after snitch. He didn't need yep. time. <laughs> didn't need it at all. And that's what you want in a seeker. And Germany taking the lead. 80 to 70. 
Is Germany getting opportunity at the snitch by themselves? UK definitely having the advantage right now. Getting so close. Number 31 on the German side. It's Johannes. Oh. Fingertips right around the edge of the snitch. And oh my ah. goodness, that catch was almost good. He ripped it off the back end but could not maintain possession. Yeah, you've got to keep hold of it in your hand. It's not enough to flick it off at someone. Mm -hmm. All right, at least he gets to remain on broom and get another opportunity as his beast ah! defend him, getting so close. Germany has bludger control right now, so get, they give him time to work. Sorry, me just screeching. That wasn't commentary. That was just made me too excited. This game is too oh, exciting. I am overexcited. Callum oh, Lake is back on. The Team UK oh, taking one very down. Number one looks like he just snuck his way around and got the snitch. Okay, so we've got to wait for the consultation by the refs. Score at the start moment is 80 to 90. 80 okay. for UK, 90 for Germany. Let's see if, if we're going to call that a clean pull. If this is the end, the Germans can hold their heads up high that they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the UK. They definitely gave them a fight in a game. Yeah. It's not over yet. They've still got to double check. Um, and as for snitch pull rules, the refs are meeting right now to discuss if there were any cards that might offset the uh, catch to reset game, that both teams are operating under the proper gender rules, and that the snitch wasn't impeded in his movement. All several things that have to be kept in mind before a game is called by the head ref. It's a great game. I kind of want more of the game. Yeah, I really do, too. We only had, what, two minutes and nine seconds on the seeker floor? Way to call it on uh, no handicaps. Catch is good. There it is. Oh, Team and UK the catch is, is good. Take place. Team UK take home the bronze medal. And they are quite excited about it. Team For Germany once. walking on to clap. Clap the victors. That's, that's really nice. And the stands falling a bit quieter than they were this match as the Germans uh, sink back in their seats. It's a bit unfortunate to see they had an impressive display on the pitch and really gave it their all in that match. But I like this way, like I said, Germany have done better than they've ever done before yes. uh, internationally. Team UK got the medal, so everyone's a winner. Oh, yeah, it's quite In, in some ways. So, we are going to go to the analysis desk to talk about that very exciting match. I have been Bex McLaughlin. And Jorge Alberto Coronado here. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed all of this and make sure to tune in. Congratulations on the bronze medal. And man, I'm so glad we had that on the live stream. Yeah, phenomenal row, great play from Germany. Uh, I thought it was Let's just use soft skin just in case. I'm Gio right. Fino. I'm Philip Shores. Thank you guys for joining us.
So, yeah, so phenomenal game. The UK went off to a very quick start. Absolutely. A couple of goals from Tom Stevens and Bexlow played phenomenally, but then the Germans brought it back. Yeah, they really had the Germans very early, disrupting anything in their offense. No pass was coming through, no drives at all. The driving game of Germany in the first few minutes was absolutely shut down, but then a switch click from the Germans and somehow the offense stirred. I thought, um, yeah, the phenomenal defense from both teams, very good physical game. Lots of big tackles from all players. Players like uh, Abby Harris when she came on for the UK. She's on the knee brace, if you couldn't tell. Phenomenal player. Um, you had Geneva Chambers with the, uh, it's the first tournament for the UK, uh, representing yeah. the UK. She played phenomenally all weekend. Um, other chases, I can't see, my brain is still boom. Yeah. Rosa Kuhn with some great defense there. Uh, Tom Orloff, very physical player. But yeah, uh, that was a great uh, defensive offense. And I mean, a great signal for our sport where you can grow if you continue practicing and elaborating your game of Quidditch. So I feel it's very much a game of two teams in the sense of the Germans are draw from a wider pool of teams. Yeah. So there's lots of different tactics coming together and a lots of different influences there. Yeah. Where the UK, as we said before, is typically drawn from the three main teams in the UK, London Quidditch Club, Velociraptors, and Wolves of London. There are a few players who aren't of those, Tommy Rula, um, Matt Croft, and uh, Alex McCartney, just to name some. But you can see that those three team style play yeah. is, uh, has been permitted into the uh, UK offense. With Seb Walters, who was keeping, playing that slow, patient offense, that big box formation, yeah. passing it around to Ben Malpass, and then going when the beaters are taking out their beaters. When there's no bludgers, driving through and going for those dunks. Yeah, and when we're looking at the secret floor, I think uh, you're always talking about creating the bubble, but in this case, the bubbles were almost non-existent, maybe for like five to ten seconds, and immediately there was no thing at all, making two impeccable seekers do their best job. Callum, you did a great job. Hats off to you. Great catch. Johannes Klein-Peters also with some very close touches there. Mm. You could see this on the stands. That was maybe like inches away from getting the secret. And as you said, the bubble just wasn't able to be set. Yeah. The, because of the aggressive beating from both sets of beaters, trying to take those trades, if, they've, if they're set in the bubble, they're going to try and beat out their beaters, the other opposing beaters. If they're, on, if they're not set in the bubble, they're going to try and take out the seeker. I think the UK had a lot of missed beats. Yeah. And luckily, they didn't live to regret them. I know Mike Yorich missed a few, but he's managed to keep his head at his young age of 16, keep cool, keep composed, and managed to keep going. And Callum Lake came on, started, then came off. Trev tried to have a go. Jordan tried to have a little bit. Unfortunately, didn't get there. Callum Lake came back on. I know when Jordan comes off immediately, he means that he's this close. And he goes, someone with a bit taller, such as Callum Lake, would have that. Came yeah. back on, caught it. I mean, Team UK with their young group, uh, I think they're looking in the future when they uh, uh, declared this roster. Mm -hmm. uh, team Germany, very diverse group. I think this is not it for either of those teams. There's a lot of growth possible, uh, either because that's a very diverse crowd where you get your uh, team from, and also because the youth and the gaining of experience on an international level. Exactly. And I'm wondering to you, on this stage, when we've seen a bubble being sort of created, is it maybe harder to create a bubble when their team, the, the level of play, just rises and rises? Yeah, so typically a bubble is very, uh, you can set a bubble quite comfortably against weaker oppositions. But this, this game, the beaters were on par. There was no weak yeah, beaters in terms of both teams knew how to set a bubble, both teams knew how to break a bubble, and the aggression was there with the good mid and long range beating. When you're up against a team with good, comfortable mid range beaters, you can't set a bubble. So you just have to take the trades, take the trades. Yeah. It's phenomenally tiring for the beaters, but all you need is that half a second. This is why seeking, which is often quite under, um, underutilized in, German, in, uh, in European Quidditch, in my opinion, um, a lot of teams will try and defensively seek unless they're one-on-one. -on -one. This is a game that has demonstrated that you can't do that. If you have any semblance of a chance, there is no beats around. Even if there is another seeker in, you have to be trying to get that catch because the other person could get it comfortably. You're absolutely right, you have nothing to add there. And uh, maybe a quick look out for the final wave now in front of our eyes. It's going to be France versus Belgium. I think a lot of people like uh, thought that was, these two teams would be like in the final, like at least in the top four. And they deserved it. They had a tough road. They both took and they take some losses. The winner of the European Games will not be an undefeated champion. And we'll see them battle it out. Who do you think has the upper hand in that matchup? I think, as you said, both teams are taking some losses. And what's impressive is both teams have bounced back. Absolutely. That sometimes if you take that loss, your head can go down. You could lose, especially if your more experienced players start to drop. That's when the inexperienced ones panic. 
But what was good from both teams is they're more experienced players, ones who have played for many years, not only in the national team, but also in Quidditch in general, managed to stay calm, collected, and pick up their team. I saw a lot of them in their si um, on the sides around, yeah. cheering everyone up, picking them up, giving some praise and support, and that's quite important. Personally, I think it's too close to call. I think it'll be Actually, another swim game. I was just going to say that. I mean, if we're looking at it's basically what you see in EQC. There's like Antwerp and Paris. Now it's Belgium versus France. I'm a betting man, and I'm oh. like, I'm staying away from this one. Yeah. I, have, I have no clue. I would not want to place a bet anywhere. I, I've, like, and, I mean, it's not for us to decide. Um, it's for you guys to watch. It's for us to see. And we'll be right back with you, uh, with Gio and me as we commentators. We hope you stay tuned. It's not, a it's not going to take a long time. We'll be right back with the final of the European Games 2019 in Bamberg. It's going to be a treat. It's not one to miss. All right. Take care, guys.